after using this thin and light laptop to run gaming benchmarks for almost two years, I found that the heat extremely affects the results, and my previous results are not as accurate as they can possibly be. So in this video, let's rerun all the benchmarks on a desktop PC and see which gaming distributions are worth installing. Before that, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day, with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. It's the opposite of mindless scrolling. Brilliant recently launched a ton of new content in data, all of which uses real-world data to train you to see trends and make better informed decisions. The new courses are perfect for learners of any level to start and continue learning data analysis with a fully built-out thread of new content from Bayes' theorem to multiple linear regression. And you can also learn how to parse and visualize massive data sets to make them easier to interpret. At the same time, gaining some insights by working with real data sets from sources like Starbucks, X, or Twitter, Spotify, and more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, Visit brilliant.org slash mumblinghugo or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off for an annual premium subscription. I will try to answer three questions in this video. Do gaming distributions perform better than their base systems? When should you choose one and why do you need to avoid them? The testing system that I'm using consists of an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X CPU. 32 gigabytes DDR4 RAMs, NVIDIA RTX 4070 Ti GPU, and a 144Hz 4K monitor. The distributions I chose for this video are Pika OS based on Ubuntu, Nobara based on Fedora, Garuda Linux based on Arch, and Regatta OS based on OpenSUSE, along with all their base systems. Let's see if these gaming systems are really able to improve anything. When I set off to find some suitable games to run benchmarks, I didn't expect it to be the most time-consuming task for this video. It took me more than a week to finalize with only three workable games. First, since I want to use Mango Hut to record benchmark sessions and see the 0.1%, 1% low and average, I needed games that have a built-in benchmark tool. So my girlfriend got me a list of the most common games run by some other YouTubers on Windows. Then I cross-referenced this website to filter the ones without benchmark tools, and searched the leftover games on ProtonDB with those having either gold or platinum ratings. I got Hitman 3, F1 2022, Cyberpunk 2077, Dying Light 2, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Then the hard part begins. The first thing is to make sure the benchmark in these games is a continuous clip which does not have any black loading screen. Previously, I had to use the final clip of the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark to record frame rates. Otherwise, the black screens will cause Mango Hut to record the maximum frame rates. Plus, the loading screens are not equal in time, so it will result in inaccurate data. Dying Light 2, Hitman 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Tomb Raider were removed from the list, all because of this. As half of the list was gone, I added Callisto Protocol as a new candidate. Second, the games for this video should not require major tweaks to work on Linux. They should work as soon as I added them to Heroic Game Launcher instead. This is because the more tinkering a game needs, the slower I could finish recording this video. So I replaced Assassin's Creed Valhalla with Watch Dogs Legion. Thirdly, the games should not have any glitches when running on Linux because glitches can produce extremely low 0.1% FPS, like 4 or 9, which will invalidate one out of the three of the benchmark numbers that I want to use. I tried Horizon Zero Dawn. Even though it met all other requirements, it had glitches here and there. 
People on ProtonDB said system hibernate could fix this issue, but it is still another tinker that I had to do each time, which is time consuming and prone to errors, so I let it go. Finally, these games are required to produce at least 40 FPS on 4K ultra settings for me to see any differences, so I removed Cyberpunk 2077. After more than a week of testing, I ended up with F122, the Callisto Protocol, and Watch Dogs Legion, as they all contain one continuous benchmark, work out of the box with Proton GE, and can produce more than 40 FPS without any glitches. I also switched the launcher from Bottles to Heroic Launcher because it was easier to manage. After setting the Wine Prefix folder to a shared data partition, I didn't have to export the Bottles archive and import it again every time when I switch systems. Now let's compare Pika OS with Ubuntu. As a gaming distribution, Pika OS didn't produce better numbers in either F122 or the Callisto protocol, and it looked like Pika has some noise on the Callisto protocol average number, but 0.1% low and 1% low numbers were down. It had better numbers produced by the Watch Dogs Legion. Then it's the Regatta OS and OpenSUSE. Similarly, F122 and the Callisto protocol were producing better results on the base system than the gaming system, while Watchdog Legions did the opposite. I thought the same thing would happen to Nobala and Fedora, but I was wrong. F122 in Nobala had a small edge on the 0.1% number, but 1% and average were lower. It had a better 1% low number in the Callisto protocol and a better 0.1% low in Watchdog Legions. But overall, these two distributions demonstrated almost identical performance. Finally, let's compare Garuda and Arch. I didn't install Pure Arch, but use the next best thing, Endeavor OS, as the replacement to save time. I saw Garuda perform better than Endeavor on Formula 1 across the board. It had better 0.1% low and average numbers on both Callisto Protocol and Watch Dogs. It was the only gaming distribution that was kind of outperformed its base system. This means we have the answer to the question, does gaming distributions have better performance than their base system? Not at all. Overall, the best performing gaming distribution was Garuda, though with some minor noises, we can say its performance was on par with Endeavor OS, not necessarily better. Then let's find out the distance between the best performed and the worst performed distro for each game. Because there were some noises on the average number, let's just compare 0.1% and 1% low. On F122, the best performer was Ubuntu and the worst was Regatta. They had around 26% performance difference. With the Callisto protocol, best numbers were seen on OpenSUSE and the worst were seen on Garuda. They had 13% difference. Finally, on Watch Dogs, the difference was 13% as well between the worst performer Ubuntu and best performer Regatta. From the game perspective, we have seen both situations when pure distribution performed better and when gaming distribution performed better. But when comparing the gaming distributions to their own base system, they actually had similar performance, which means gaming distributions do not show advantage in performance. So the final question to answer is that, is it worth it to choose these gaming distributions over their base system? Let's look at this in pros and cons. It's definitely better to go with gaming systems if they save you some time to set up. After installing these 8 distributions, I can see gaming distributions tend to have more user-friendly features for gamers, especially when they have NVIDIA GPU. Pika, Regatta, and Nobala all have NVIDIA versions on their website for download. Garuda will walk you through the NVIDIA driver installation during the first time boot up. Well, on the pure distribution side, 
Ubuntu were able to install NVIDIA automatically when I enabled the third-party option in Live CD, and Endeavor OS did the same when I used the NVIDIA option to boot up the installation CD. But Fedora and OpenSUSE required users to install the driver separately due to their license. Gaming distributions are also good with additional features. Nobala and Pika OS were packed with additional codecs for AMD GPU to use DaVinci Resolve. I know Bazai OS, which I tested in this video, has a console mode which launches the Steam Big Picture mode by default. You don't get this with any of the pure distributions out of the box. However, the downside of the gaming distributions is also not to be ignored. They have some heavy initial tweaks. I know a lot of people don't like the default Dragonite theme from Garuda Linux, and some distributions are using their own repository. So when a conflict comes from the upstream system, a regular Google search solution won't work. After two months of using Pika OS as a daily driver, a package conflict was caused by the Ubuntu system upstream. I couldn't use the solution on Ubuntu forum to solve it because Pika uses its own repo. I had to join their Discord server and browse their announcements to solve it. Finally, unlike pure distribution, which is usually adopted by more people, the solutions provided by gaming distro developers can't work 100% of the time. When I was dual booting Pika OS with Regatta OS on two separate SSDs, the Pika OS NVIDIA driver broke, and it broke the driver in Regatta OS right away. Following the announcement messages in Pika OS Discord channel, I wasn't able to fix it and ended up reinstalling both systems. Now, let's reiterate our answer to this ultimate question. Is this still worth it to go with a gaming distribution? The answer comes down to if you're willing to go additional miles to fix issues on these gaming distributions to treat additional functionalities. I was using an AMD GPU on my desktop previously, and I have tried several times to set up DaVinci Resolve on Fedora. But I failed. I would have gone with Nobala if I wanted to use it. But now I have no such issue because I switched to NVIDIA GPU. And if I want to set up the desktop to be used as a console with the AMD GPU, I would definitely go with a distro like Buzzite or Chamera OS. But now I'm happy with everything coming from Endeavor OS. However, this is just my perspective. Let me know your answer to this question in the comment down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.